everyone, it's Selena here. Welcome to my channel. I'm glad you guys could join me today. I'm super excited to have you here. For today's video, I wanted to share these place cards that I created for my Thanksgiving table this year. And every year I come up with a different theme. And this year I thought I would use the two Paper Diva stamp set. This is the Hooter stamp set. altered this the image to create these pilgrim owls this is one way you can get a different look from your clear stamps by altering them I use my Cricut Explorer machine to cut out the uh, scallop circles and the label and the letters for the names. This is my youngest daughter's place card. Here's mine. And here's my oldest daughter, her place card. It's a uh, tradition in our home for me to come up with a centerpiece for our table, placemats, table runner, and place cards. I will leave links down in the description box below to projects from the previous years on my blog that you guys can check out. Now I have one more place card to make and that is my husband's place card and I thought that I would center this tutorial on that. That way I can show you how to turn these owls it's Pilgrim Owls. Now to save time, I've already stamped out my owls on a scrap piece of Recollections white cardstock and my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Now to create the uh, Pilgrim hat on the uh, owl here on the left. Now for the hat, I want to start off with a cone shape round off the top add my brim carry it around across the top of the eyes and back up and around so that it hits the back of the hat right there. Okay, now I'm going to draw a small square at the top, draw even smaller square along the inside to create the buckle, and then finish off with the brim of the hat. Let me bring that up close so you guys can see exactly what I did right there. Now for the bonnet, I'm going to go in, create a upside down U or an arch. Just penciling it in pretty faintly. And actually I'm actually starting from the top of the wing, having the curve follow the eye here, have it meet up with this curve that's already in the stamp and then bringing it down over the other eye down to the top of this wing here. Now I'm going to start on this side just create a little line there I'll start on this side and then I'm creating the brim of the bonnet just using that same shape looks almost like a rainbow shape I would say it's like you're creating a little rainbow along the top of the owl's head right there see it's like an arch and now I'm gonna put in the top of the bonnet which is just a half circle going from 
this end over to and finishing off over here. And that's what the bonnet will look like to draw it in. Now with my fine tip black marker, I'm going to trace over my pencil lines for the pilgrim hat and the bonnet. Here we go. Now I will go back in and erase my pencil marks. I will do that off camera. And then we'll get started on the coloring when I come back. I erased the pencil lines off camera. And I used my white gel pen to fill in the lines that still show from the stamp so that it looks like it's one stamp. I'm not too worried about the uh, the line showing up from the image on the pilgrim hat because I'm going to use my dark C0 markers to color it in. Now that we have the hats filled in, let me try to zoom in a bit for you guys. We can get to the coloring part. And for the owls, I actually use my E markers. I use my E70, E74, and E79 markers. Now, I actually started off with the belly of the owls. So I went in with my And went in and added where I thought the shading would be. Then I went in with my darker E74 marker. Then I blended it with my E70 marker. And blended it towards the center. I wanted to use warm tones on these owls. So if you saw my first video up on my channel where I turned these owls into spooky owls for Halloween, I used my cool gray markers to darken them up a bit make them spooky. Then I went back in with my E74 and just added some feathers. Just give it a little bit of texture. And then went over them with my E70 marker. Just to lighten it up a bit, not much. Now for the owl's body and wings, 
I only used my two E, e markers, my E74 and my E79. Start off with this left wing here. And hit it with my E79 marker to darken up the shadows. And then went in with my E74 to blend it out towards the center. to the head up here I tend to use the very tip of my marker when I'm going in adding shading to smaller areas like this right here I feel like it gives me more control I'm gonna go back in with my E79 doing the same thing using the very tip of my marker just being careful not to add too much just enough now let's blend it out with my E74 Now for the feet and the B portion, I use my Artist Loft marker and it's number 404 and my Pro marker in Spice. My 404 is a lighter orange and my Spice marker is a shade darker. So I'll add the shadows, hit it with the spice marker to darken it up. Then I'll blend the whole thing out with my 404 marker. There we go. Now for the Pilgrim hat, I use my darker C0 markers. Let me grab them real quick. I have my CG6, CG7, and CG8 markers. Bring this into frame for you guys. And I went in with my lighter cool gray marker my CG6 kind of flicked in some of the color towards the center actually like leaving the center white no color because then leaves a nice little light area I'm gonna hit it with my CG7 darken up the shadows a bit. Oh, sorry guys, I'm not in frame. Hit it with my darkest marker, CG8. Make those shadows more pronounced. And we'll go back and reverse. Use our CG7, work our way backwards. And then finally, 
our lightest color, our CG6. And just blend it out. Now for the top of the pilgrim hat, I just hit it with my CG8. This is a small area. I didn't really want to add too much shading to it. Now for the brim of the hat, hit it with my CG6. It's going along there, leaving the outermost portion of the brim white. Now my CG7. And lastly my CG8. Since this area is narrow and small, I, I skipped over my CG7 and just went straight for my CG6 just to blend it all out. Okay, there we go. Now for the buckle. Now for the buckle on the hat, I use my Bic Market Marker. It's a metallic marker in color yellow gold. Let's fill it in. And there we go. Now for the hat trim, I use my CG2 marker, just flicking in a little bit of color, just on the edges. Wanted to keep it mostly white, just to add a little bit of shading, not much. Now for the eyes, I did add an eyeball. Taking a pencil, just drawing a circle. There we are. Okay. And I'll do the same thing for the owl on the right. Just to get that step out of the way. Next, I'll go in with my fine tip black marker just to darken up that pencil outline a bit use my pencil to erase the pencil marks and there we have it now I'm going to use my G markers to fill it in. I use my G43 and G46 markers for the eyes. Going in with my G46. First, add the shadow to the middle of the eye and then blending it out with my G43 and I'll do the same thing for the owl on the right using the same two colors hit it with my G46 first darken up the middle of the iris blend it out my G43 and I'll go in with my fine tip black marker to add the pupil area back in bring that up close so you can see. There we go. Then I'll hit it with my white gel pen to add a bit of highlight to the eye. Just 
right here along the upper corner of the eye. And there you go. We have our first owl done. Now coloring for the second owl is pretty much the same as the first one except for the bonnet. So I will color this second owl off camera and I will catch you guys back here so we can work on the bonnet. And here is our owls completed. Now I'm going to go to coloring her bonnet and for that I use my B12 and B14 markers. And here are the owls all colored up. Now off camera I use my white gel pen to add a highlight to the beaks and added a few feathers to the wings and highlight the feathers that I put in with my E74 marker. Now all that's left to do now is to color in the bonnet and for that I use my B12 and B14 Copic markers and make sure I'm in frame for you guys. What I'll do is just start flicking in that B12 along the brim and along the top of the bonnet. I'm going to darken up the shading a bit with my B14 marker. This is an adorable little stamp set. It was fun making these guys all spooky for Halloween. Then I darkened up the shadows using my B14 marker. And then blending it out with my B12 marker towards the center. Or in this case, along towards the top. And there you have it, a bonnet all colored in. Now for this next part, <clears throat> I'm going to fussy cut these guys out off camera. We'll make you guys sit through that. Um, when I return, we will put the place card together. Now I'm going to try to line up my scallops, there we go, press that down, let me zoom out a little bit for you guys so you can see exactly what it is that I'm doing. My craft desk is a little bit of a mess so bear with me. I'm going to do the same thing with the white card sock rectangle to layer on top of this later rest cardstock and I'm going to try to line it up on the edge leaving about an eighth inch border on either edge. Now you see this is a little longer than I need. That's a quick fix. I'm just going to take my scissors and just eyeball that. And there we go. Now I'm going to use my chocolate chip ink from Stamping Up. Sorry guys, this stamp, this uh, ink pad is very well loved. And go around the edges. Just to give it. A bit of a sh uh, give it a little shading 
not much. Okay, let's do the same thing on our scallop circle. Okay, we have those done. And we're going to layer our owls in the center of our scallop circle and attach our rectangle behind this panel here, this uh, scallop circle panel. Now for the um, the base, place card base, I use a piece of craft card sock, cut it down to five by five and a half inches. Use my Martha Stewart corner rounder to round off the corner edges, opposite sides. And then I created my own pattern paper using my Versamark ink. And this great stamp set that was released, I think it was in September, from the Two Paper Divas. This is Fall Leaves stamp set. Has some great images in there. There we go has some oak leaves, has some maple leaves, even has an acorn. So I use my I use the uh, maple leaves and this oak leaf right here and the acorn and just stamp them on the craft using first marking. Because it's such a nice subtle pattern. I really like how that turned out. Okay. Now I also use my Cricut Explorer to cut out the letters to make up the names for everyone. This one says Dad, that's for my husband. And I use my RV69, RV66, and RV63 markers to color it in to create like an ombre effect. Let me bring it up so you can see it a little better. There you go. Okay. Create an ombre effect. I really like. Now to determine where I wanted to put the letters so they would line up nicely. Kind of put my, let me try to clear off my desk really quick guys, sorry. Kind of just place my scalp circle where I want it. And then I use my exacto knife to lift off the letters. My Xyron sticker maker. And I'm going to try to line up these letters. Just layering on and just start putting them on the uh, place card. Grab the A. Did leave a little bit of a space in between each letter. And lastly, just take the little the lowercase d. Try to eyeball it as best as we can. And there we go. All right. Now, before I attach my scallop circle to the rectangle. I am going to stamp it using my mental ink. And another stamp set that was released in September from the Two Paper Divas. This is the uh, Twig and Branches set. I could have left the um, 
the branch that the owls sit on. So the branch right here. So I fussy cut them out and I thought if I would layer them on top of this twig with the uh, berries. And this this goes pretty quick, so sorry guys, I'm out of frame. Okay, I'm gonna lay it on my stamp block. I'm only gonna ink up to right about here. A little more than halfway down the stamp. Just ink it up. Okay. Now I'm going to lay it across the bottom of the scallop circle, stamp it, there we go. I can always go back in with my black marker, fine line black marker, and just extend that uh, line a bit. Now I'm going to stamp it again along the top. But this time around, I'm just going to stamp up, I mean ink up the uh, the upper portion, making sure to wipe off the excess. Okay, I'm going to stamp it along the top. And there we go. I know I didn't get a clear image here, but that is an easy fix. I could have simply just turned the um, scallop circle around if I didn't already mount it onto the uh, base here. So let me see if I can find my black marker. Here it is. I'm just going to extend this line. Darken it up just a bit and just extend it down towards the edge. And then I can fill in these twigs here so I can get a clear image. Right in stamp. I didn't uh, press down on my stamp enough, put enough pressure. I'm going to fill in those berries. I'm going to show you how I added a touch of bling to these berries without using any glitter. good. I use my big Market Yellow Glow Marker, the same marker that I use for the um, buckle on the hat. And I kind of just dotted in the color on top of the berries, just the color of them. It is a solid image, so it will fill it in. But I really like how it turned out using the gold marker. And this gold marker is pretty opaque so I have a few others. I have a silver, I have a bronze, I also have some colored metallic markers. Gives it just a hint of shimmer. Gives it a little something extra. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my place card. Try to figure out exactly where I want everything to go. So we might have to extend that one out a bit. 
wait to figure out where everything is going to go before I actually attach anything. Figure out the placement. Try to line up things as best as I can before I commit. So that looks pretty good. So let's attach our rectangle. And I add my adhesive about an eighth of an inch before you hit the first letter in the name. I'm going to make sure I have it where I want it before I press it down. Okay, that looks good right there. Now I'm going to attach it. I may have to trim this off a bit, this little edge here, not much. Let's trim it off a little bit and go back in with my chalk chip ink, ink it up a bit. Okay, that looks better. All right, now I'm going to add my tape runner and just attach it to the place card. German frame for you guys so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now, I did these, these, I filed the same steps for all of the place cards. And mistake number one, I don't have my twig going in the right direction. Okay, there we go. All right. Now, okay, that looks much better. All right, so let's lay it down. Press. There we go. Now, figure out where I'm going to place my owls. They will look nice right there. Grab my foam tape. Add couple pieces of foam tape to my owls. Just added them more towards the middle of their bodies. A little bit here. Put a little piece along the bonnet. Cut a little smaller. Okay, there we go. Now I can remove the backing out of the foam tape. And attach it to my place card. And there you have it. And here are the completed place cards that I will be featuring on my holiday table this year. And I want to thank you guys for joining me today. I will leave all the links to the Two Paper Divas uh, store where you can purchase the stamp test that we use in today's tutorial. Fall leaves. Twig and berries. And hooters. And I will also leave a link to the blog post. You guys check it out. And I will also leave links to my previous place cards that I made for you guys to check out. Thank you guys again for joining me today. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace.